Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, December 27th, 2020, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2022 midterm elections, the governor and senate elections in this video, uh, which is part one of my 2022 midterm results based on the presidential election result. We always compare the midterm year and the presidential election year to see where support was lost or gained for the incumbent political party. But we also can get a pretty general indication of where certain states are going to go in a future election. So on your screen right now is the 2022 governor elections map. I know it says 2018, but they occur every four years. So it will be the exact same map that was on your screen and is on your screen right now. And of course, I have the 2022 Senate map ready to adjust. Like I said in the beginning, the only thing missing is the House of Representatives map, which I will go into more in depth just because the House is generally the best indicator of a wave election or a year where the incumbent political party may actually perform slightly better than expected. So we're going to focus on these governor elections. It's going to be very plain. We're not going to worry too much about margins. We will get into them, but we're not going to talk too closely about why Florida would be lean for the GOP. This is just the election results. So we're just going to characterize it based off how they voted. But at the same time, we're not going to be too caught up in the reasons why, because of course, this is based off election results we have already characterized and already taken a look at. So I know it's unfortunate I'm using 270 to win, but I couldn't find the 2018 governor election on YAPMS, nor could I find the 2022 governor elections. They're one in the same, but couldn't find anything besides the Senate. So uh, we're back to 270 to win temporarily until one is provided for us. But uh, based off of the map that we see right now, you will notice a lot of safe Republican states, a lot of states starting straight off the bat, eight states in total that were safe for the GOP. That means anything above 15 points in favor of the right wing. Next is the likely states. But we'll actually characterize the safe Democratic states first. This flips the state of Vermont. That is the first flip in this entire map. Vermont goes to the Democratic Party. Uh, the next state would be Massachusetts. Another flip. Connecticut, Rhode Island are not flips. Uh, Maine is not actually Maine was not safe. Sorry about that. That was a likely state. Uh, Maryland flipped to, from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party. Uh, the next state would be California, Oregon, Hawaii. None of these with uh, Republican incumbents and Illinois. So far, the Democrats are at 17. The Republicans are at 15. We're going to go through this fairly quickly because, like I said, we're not focused too much on why certain states are voting because it's based off an election we've already spent years analyzing. So 18 states remain. Let's start off with the likely Republican states. This includes Kansas, which went to Trump by 14.7%. Texas, which went to Trump by 5.5%. Alaska went to Trump by just a little bit over 10 points. South Carolina, roughly the same margin as the state of Alaska. So that goes in favor of the GOP. Ohio, Iowa, two states the Democratic Party has thought of before as possible pickups. Not so much in 2018, probably not in 2022. Kansas is the first flip, the only flip actually so far on all of the likely states. Kansas currently has a Republican, sorry, Democratic governor. That could possibly change in 2022 if it was based off the presidential election results themselves. So that puts the Republicans at 21. There aren't any other likely Republican states. Let's move into the likely Democratic states. This includes Colorado, which shouldn't be too surprising. This includes New Mexico. This includes Minnesota. This includes New Hampshire and Maine. So that puts the Democrats at 22. Currently, they hold, I believe, 20 three or 24 seats in the governorship because we just saw the state of Kentucky, not just saw, but 2019, Kentucky flipped to the Democratic Party. Louisiana remained in the Democratic Party column. So I believe 2018 ended off 27 to 23. It's now up to 26, 24 after 2020 because Montana went from Democratic control to Republican control. I believe it is now back to 27, 23. So uh, the Republican Party was in the majority. So let's see right now the Democrats are one away from where they currently are. We will see at the end of this with uh, them gaining seats, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So uh, the next states are lean states. These are states that were won by narrow amounts by uh, political parties, and there's actually only one lean Republican state, and that is the state of Florida. That state goes to the GOP by a 3% margin, the same margin that Donald Trump won. As for the Democratic Party, they have some other lean states that I actually should be pretty proud of. Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. This actually puts the Democratic Party at 25, which means in the worst case, they would tie with the Republican Party. But it actually gets better. In fact, they would win Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona based off the election results, which would actually put them in the majority. In fact, they could perform better than 2018 based purely on their 2020 election performance, based purely on their 2020 election performance. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, all states with Democratic incumbents, they would stay. Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, 
all states with democratic incumbents they would stay the flips come from maryland the flips come from massachusetts the flips come from vermont new hampshire states that are currently held by republican governors that's four with just those four states alone the republican party would be at 26 but without them they are not even close uh, there are some other states that have actually flipped but in favor of the gop Kansas flips, for instance. Uh, I believe that's actually it in terms of flips to the GOP. Arizona and Georgia flip to the Democratic Party, and the rest of the states remain the same. So this is the governor map 2022 based off the election results. Democrats actually have a very real possibility of winning the National Governors Association majority. Now let's move into the Senate. Obviously a lot more at stake here. Actually, maybe not, because what we've seen in COVID uh, during the COVID time period, which is still continuing, uh, absolutely, is that governors are the first line of defense and very, very crucial to every citizen. But generally, they are overseen. Generally, we don't talk too much about the governor elections as much as the Senate or House results because usually those are national things. Governorships are generally statewide, which is exactly why you see Republicans win in Maryland and Massachusetts on the same ballot that Biden wins by 30 points. You know, that's just how, or not, sorry, not Democrat, or not Biden, sorry, Democrats in 2018. But let's get right into this. Uh, there shouldn't be too many surprises. We are going to work in the assumption that Georgia would be characterized the same way it voted in the presidential election in the January runoff. So you will see two democratic states but i will show you what the map would actually look like if just one state went to the gop because it actually wouldn't be the worst case scenario for the democratic party so of course we're characterizing all of the safe states there shouldn't be too many surprises same exact safe states from the governor map just with a few more states included because the map did expand so that puts the democrats at 44 the republicans are at 30 let's get into the safe republican states utah idaho north and south dakota oklahoma arkansas louisiana kentucky indiana missouri alabama uh, not south carolina so that puts the Republicans at 41. So you can already see that the Democratic Party does start out with the initial advantage. But based off likely states, that would put Iowa, Ohio, Kansas in the Republican column. These three states were targeted by Democrats in the past in House elections, were targeted in the Senate elections in Iowa and Kansas in 2020. I honestly don't think the Democratic Party is going to be heavily investing as much as they did in 2020 in either Iowa or Kansas or even really Ohio. So that puts the Republicans at 44. Uh, but we also have left out South Carolina and Alaska. So it expands that margin even higher up to 46 with 10 toss up races for the Democrats. Do they have any likely states? They do. They have Colorado and they have New Hampshire. So you can see now after safe and likely states, it is a tie. There are eight toss up states that remain. But right now, the Democratic Party holds on no flips yet for either political party. We will see if that holds true by the end of the uh, map after we characterize every single state. For the Republican Party, let's go ahead and move into their lean states. We have North Carolina and Florida, two states that were won by lean margins for uh, the GOP or for Donald Trump in 2020. This election, 2022, of course, we're holding them to it. So North Carolina and Florida go to the, the Republican Party. For the Democrats, though, they have lean states in Pennsylvania and Nevada. These are states that were won by lean characterizations. And honestly, it's something that the Democratic Party did very, very well. Uh, they were able to win in Pennsylvania, which was a state won by Donald Trump. They were able to retain the same margin in Nevada. They should have expanded it. But then again, Biden did see a pretty significant decrease in terms of Latino support across the country. So Nevada could have ended up being narrower, but it was counteracted by the uh, wider uh congressional districts that actually flipped for the first time for Joe Biden when they didn't flip for Hillary Clinton, even though she won by the same exact margin as Joe Biden, in fact, by a larger margin. But again, very narrowly larger margin, 0.01% we're talking in terms of the shift. So that puts the Democrats at 48 with Arizona included. It would also put the Democrats at 49. And then you would have to include one Senate seat from Georgia. The reason for that uh, and Wisconsin, sorry, the reason for that is because uh, Georgia, regardless of the outcome on January 5th, there will be one Senate election up in 2022. And then whoever wins that will go on to a six year term. But uh, John Ossoff, if he wins or David Peru wins, they are set for six years. They will next have their election in 2026. This time, though, no matter who wins on January 5th, 2021 for the Senate special election, they will face off to uh, either again or against new opponents or both of them could be primaried. Um, we will see a new election in November 2022 in a midterm year. So that's why that is being characterized straight off the bat. But let's assume that this state is narrowly won by the GOP. Well, that puts the Democrats still in the majority, 51 to 49. 
What happens if the GOP even wins the state of Georgia? Well, that still puts the Democratic Party in the majority because it's a 50-50 tie. So the actual reality of the situation is if the Democratic Party can hold their 2020 election performance on the presidential level in a number of these states, where does that put them? It puts them in the majority in terms of the governorships, 28 to 22, larger than the Republicans. Uh, what would happen in the Senate? The Democrats would reclaim the majority in what is supposed to be a Republican wave year. That would be super impactful, 51 to 49. So over Overall, the Democratic Party should really hope to ensure that they match their 2020 election performance. Donald Trump did not in 2018, and this would be the map if all of these states held based off of their 2022 performance. And let's say they continue, Montana would be the only discrepancy on this map. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you stay tuned for part two when I cover the House elections. That will be a lot more intensive. Go ahead and subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my post-2020 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.